Well, hello, and thanks for tuning in. My name is Carl Clues, and I'd like to talk to you today about this beautiful bass that arrived at my place this week. This is the prototype of the Bogart Warhorse. Now, I'd better give you some history first. Um, those of you who are regular viewers uh, will know that a few years ago, uh, Stefan Hess of Bogart Bases, based in Germany, uh, reached out to me after having seen some of my videos uh, with an offer to design and build a signature base for me. Now, knowing Stefan's reputation as a builder, I was obviously flattered and very, very honoured and, of course, only too happy to take him up on his offer. And uh, so we, we threw around a few ideas and from that collaboration came, first of all, this base, the prototype, which I call the Silver Surfer, and then the production model of my signature base, the Broadsword. Now, I've been very, very happy with these bases the last couple of years. Uh, if you've been watching my channel, you'll have seen me using both of these bases, um, both in the studio and live. And um, I'm still over the moon with them, uh, just perfect for me. So you might ask, why do you need another? <laughs> well, um, the story behind this is that uh, a couple of months ago I was playing a series of gigs in Finland and through a certain set of circumstances I wasn't able to have my Bogart basses with me. So I found myself using um, a Music Man Stingray. Um, now, there are a lot of things about Stingrays that I don't like. Um, I think ergonomically, they're clunky, they're heavy. I always prefer a bass without a head. Um, I don't particularly like the bridge. And um, I'm not even particularly keen on the, the stock Stingray preamp. Uh, for me, it's a little too trebly. So the bass that I was using in Finland had a, a, a Seymour Duncan preamp in there instead, which, which warmed it up and smoothed it out a lot for me. Um, now, that said, I had a lot of fun playing that bass while I was there, um, primarily because of the unique tone of a Stingray. There's, there's a very distinctive splash at the beginning of each note in the attack and, and a really zingy top end that made it a lot of fun to play. And um, for all their versatility, um, my signature bass just that is the one sound it can't do um, a twin pickup bass like like the, the broadsword is never going to be able to do that stingray sound it's just that's just how it is because that sound comes from the massive music man style uh, pickup in just the sweet spot so um, when I got back I, I was thinking about this and I thought, well, wouldn't it be fantastic to have that Stingray sound in a bass that I actually like the look of and like the feel of and that feels comfortable and familiar to me, such as a Bogart. <laughs> so I got back to, to Stefan and uh, just ran this idea by him. I thought, you know, what do you think about building uh, a simple workhorse bass? You know, for the um, the bread and butter gigs, just simple setup, plug in and play, no fiddling, with that Stingray sound. And um, Stefan got back to me immediately and said, "I love it. Let's do it." And um, a few months later, this is what appeared. Now, uh, it is uh, essentially. Uh, in terms of design and feel and uh, ergonomics, it is exactly the same as the broadsword. So it feels perfectly familiar to me, perfectly comfortable, really playable, really smooth. Um, if you want to know more about the construction of uh, the, the broadsword and, and the warhorse, because it's fascinating, um, Stefan uses space age materials it's a carbon fiber neck it's composite resin body um, 
if you want to know more about the advantages of these uh, this construction type then do please watch my earlier video I did a demo video on the broadsword uh, sometime last year I think um, I'll put a link to it up there if you're on a laptop and um, otherwise it'll be in the show notes down below um, so I won't go through that stuff here because I've done that already on that other video um, let's focus on on the differences I mean the hardware is ever so slightly different. Uh, I believe this is a hip shot bridge, uh, whereas uh, the broadsword had an ABM bridge. Um, perfectly usable, good solid piece of metal work. It does the job, it's uh, adjustable in three dimensions, just the same as the, the ABM. Um, no issues with that at all, it's fantastic. Um, another difference is that Stefan, since building the broadsword, has moved over to using wood for the fretboard. Because previously, these bases, that, that isn't wood. The fretboard there is, is, I think it's phenolic, it's a kind of resin, a man-made material in any case. Um, the move over to wood, uh, I like it. It looks beautiful, it harks back to you know, traditional base construction beautifully finished and I don't know how it affects the sound I mean all these bases are very very punchy very very smooth and warm so you know I, I don't know if the fretboard makes any difference at all but it looks beautiful and um, what else do we have obviously we've got the Music Man style huge humbucker in what Stefan has determined to be the, the sweet spot on this particular base um, and we have uh, electronics in there from um, dark glass. It's a dark glass tone capsule in there, which to me was a, a surprising choice um, because uh, I'd always associated dark glass with um, heavy metal. <laughs> I thought they, they, they built preamps and amplifiers and pedals for heavy metal guys. Um, and I may be many things, but I'm not really a heavy metal guy. But, you know, I, I bowed to Stefan's judgment on this. You know, he's, he's got the experience, he knows what sounds good in his basses, and he chose the, the dark glass tone capsule, and uh, it sounds fantastic. He made the right choice. Um, the interesting thing about the dark glass tone capsule is it's a three band, so, um, we have the bass control, but these aren't mid and treble. Technically, uh, dark glass call them low mid and high mid. I don't know. The, the, the high mid certainly seems to operate to me in a very similar fashion to treble uh, on a, a regular three band EQ. It may be that they've decided to use a, a peak rather than a shelf function for, for that control. Maybe that makes a difference. Maybe it's just voiced a little lower than most um, treble controls. But anyway, if you if you hear me talking accidentally about uh, treble control on this bass in later in the video, uh, you'll know that what I actually mean is high mid. So as I say, we have bass, low mid, high mid, and we have uh, volume control, which you can pull out to go passive if if you need to, if you get tired of the active sound or if you have battery failure or whatever, you've got a fallback position there. You pull it out to get a, a passive tone. And um, this was a surprise to me. I wasn't expecting this. There's a three-way switch here. And this, uh, this is the secret sauce. <laughs> um, I wasn't prepared for this at all. In the uh, bridge position, you have... Um, what what we're doing there is running the pickup in parallel mode um, and that gives really nice stingray sound uh, in the middle position we switch the pickup to single coil um, which was surprising to me you can get a an almost p bass type of tone out of it um, which can be very useful in certain circumstances and again it's something my, my other basses don't do but then in neck position well 
that's, it's just nuts <laughs> at that point um, it's it's like suddenly riding a bucking bronco the whole thing comes alive you've got uh, you've got more bottom end, you've got more top end. The thing almost seems to want to play itself. It, it runs away underneath you. It's, it's, it's difficult to keep it under control. And, uh, you know, what it's doing is switching the pickup into series mode. Um, that's all it does, but wow, what a difference it makes. Um, and, you know, I call it berserker mode because it's just insane. Um, so this is why, <laughs> although we said we were going to build a workhorse, um, this is actually so much more. With a flick of a switch, this thing uh, turns into a, a raging beast. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, it, it, it'll do the work, but it's ready to go to battle as well. And this can do some serious damage in series mode, which is why I thought, Warhorse was a, a suitable name for it. Anyway, shall we have a listen how she sounds? Okay, so let me just preface this demo by explaining that I'm going direct from the bass into an audio interface into my uh, recording workstation there. There are no effects, no amps involved at all. What you're getting is the pure sound of the bass. Um, so let's uh, let's hear how she sounds um, with the switch in the bridge position, which is uh, parallel mode. Uh, all the EQ is flat. Here we go. Okay, so far so stingray-ish. It's uh, basically that sound, you know, it's, it has that distinctive splash at the beginning of the note. It has that very zingy top end, um, a little bit of finger and fret noise, which actually contribute to that stingray sound. Um, not, not too overwhelming a bottom end, just, just pretty, pretty flat across the spectrum. Uh, not too many overtones. A lot of fundamental, so it should sit in a mix really nicely. Um, let's mess around with the EQ a little bit. That's flat, let's take out some mid, low mid. You hear how that warms up immediately, it really gives the top end and the bottom end a bit more space to breathe. Really nice to slap, you know, uh, Stingrays always sound good slapped, I think. It's kind of what they were designed for, wasn't uh, Lewis Johnson involved in the design? Um, but uh, yeah, so this is no exception. Really, really nice slap sound on it. Uh, let's boost the bottom end a little bit. Here we go. Hear that difference? That's just a tiny little bit as well. Um, a little goes a long way on this EQ, definitely. I can move a little bit further if you like, hear it go up. Um, we could uh, roll off some of the top ends, some of those high mids. Let's, let's roll that all the way off. Really 
nice sound that, that kind of gets rid of the uh, a lot of the finger noise and the, the fret noise so you get a really nice clean recording sound there okay so I'll flatten all that again and let's see what this can do besides the typical stingray sound so if we move to um, the middle position with the switch uh, what this does is it turns this humbucker into a single coil I believe the one closest to the bridge so uh, EQ is all flat now this is what it sounds like <laughs> school sound I think um, obviously a bit too trebly to be true old school but uh, very few overtones at all just a really solid fundamental tone um, and I think if you roll off some of that top end you're gonna get a maybe add a little bit more bottom end start to get this um, P bassy real thumpy tone so actually if I just turn the bass pretty far up roll off the top end completely be a really nice sound for for a lot of things again a sound that uh, my other basses don't do so it's, it's, it's uh, an intriguing sound to me um, let's flatten everything again and now this is where we switch to berserker mode as I call it um, front position for the switch and what this does is switch the um, pickup to series mode now there's always a volume jump when you switch to series mode. It's just uh, physics or electronics, whichever. It's, it's just a fact of life that you get this volume jump when you switch to series mode. But not only do you get the volume jump, you get this um, kind of spectrum expansion if you like there feels there's more bottom end there's more top end it reaches further both directions fun to play really really exciting to play because uh, that sound just leaps out of it um, and if we mess with the EQ again you've got to be really careful with the EQ in series mode because um, if a little went a long way before a little goes a heck of a long way now um, so how about I take out some of that middle um, add just a touch of the bottom end uh, and take down the um, the high mids feels like it wants to play itself the thing feels alive it's fantastic um, in fact if I try rolling off let's roll off the low mids and the high mids and boost the bottom end a little bit it's like the, the best reggae bass you've ever heard really nice 
So, um, as I say, that uh, that uh, serial mode is um, the ace in the hole. Um, it's a stingray most of the time, but you flick on that serial mode and it's suddenly a stingray on steroids. Great fun to play. I'm really enjoying it. So, um, this that's how she sounds. Um, I'll reiterate that this is just a prototype at the moment. Um, I'm going to be using this on all my gigs over the, the upcoming weeks. Um, so if, uh, if I have any thoughts about improvements or changes or modifications that, that we can do in the meantime, I'll be getting back to Stefan to let him know um, so he can update the design a little bit before he creates the uh, production model. Um, but as I say, I'm really, really happy with this so far. First impressions are fantastic. It's it's great fun to play. It's, um, you know, a really user-friendly Stingray and so much more. So uh, thanks ever so much for watching the video. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's been informative. Do please watch my, uh, my earlier video on the, the broadsword. I think you'll enjoy that too. And uh, do please go check out Bogart Bases uh, on Facebook, online, um, Instagram. They're all over the place. I'll put a link up there if you're on a laptop and down in the show notes uh, for everybody else. Uh, thanks ever so much, guys. See you later.